We're the Lockwoods, and we're traveling the world to experience up close and in person all the natural wonders and distinct cultures that our kids would otherwise be learning about only through textbooks and TV. After a couple weeks of well-deserved downtime in Denver, we're flying 12 hours across the Pacific for free to add a slew of new Asian adventures to our video journal in a brand new country for us. Japan. We're starting things off with one night in Tokyo, where we're relying exclusively on robots to facilitate the entire stay. Transportation, planned by ChatGPT. Dinner, recommended by ChatGPT. And then, an overnight in the Guinness Book of World Records' first certified robot hotel. Will this experience have us singing Domo Arigato, Mr. Robato? Or leave us thinking Sayonara, Chat WTF? Let's get to it. I am so excited about this trip. Japan has been at the top of our list for quite a while now, and we're finally checking it off. And I'm super excited about this flight because we got it for 25,000 miles, and we only paid taxes like 550. And I've got my comfy, comfy travel clothes. This is from Cozy Earth, and it is so soft. I wish we caught Colt. He's snuggling up on me and he's talking about how soft my shirt is. It really is like super pillowy soft. So I'm gonna be just fine sleeping on this flight. It's actually perfect for flying to Japan because it's made from 100% sustainable bamboo and we're gonna be visiting a bamboo forest. You're basically insulting the bamboo. Why? Because you're wearing them. Oh. You can get comfy by shopping at CozyEarth.com. Use our code ALWAYS30 to get 30% off your purchase. Time Shifter app says we're supposed to sleep for three hours starting right now, so I'm gonna mask up and do that. We've got a straight flight from Denver to Tokyo, so plenty of opportunity to catch some Zs. I'm sure I look a little crazy. I'm all geared up for our long haul, but these are under eye masks, so when I sleep, I'm not gonna have puffy eyes. Sleep mask, neck pillow, this is a travel blanket. It all fits in my backpack too, it's amazing. But uh, most importantly, some melatonin. So we're gonna sleep on the flight. Konnichiwa, we are in Tokyo. And there are two airports in Tokyo. We're at one of them. <laughs> so Haneda is in the city, but it's a little bit smaller, and Nairita is considered the main airport in Tokyo, but it's at about an hour outside of the city. So we've got a lot to do. We have to go through customs and figure out how we're gonna get to our hotel because we haven't planned that out yet. Well, to that end, we're gonna rely on yet another app, ChatGPT. I just typed it in to see where we're gonna go, and we have different options to get to the hotel. The most expensive option is gonna be a taxi to get there. It's about a 60 to 90 minute drive to the hotel. The upside is we're a couple of hours late getting in because of the delays on our flight. So I think we're gonna do taxis just so the Colts get in trouble, by the way. <laughs> What'd you do? Nothing. Oh, you had to go on your okay. We're gonna to try to make up some time. So we're gonna do the taxi. We're gonna pay the little extra. We're gonna rely exclusively on computers to tell us what to do for the entire trip. By the way, so far I think things have turned out really well with our app for jet lag, which I followed to a T on the flight. So, so far I'm feeling pretty good considering it's very early in the morning, Denver time. I do really have to pee though, I haven't gone since Denver. Why not? Chat GPT didn't tell me to. <laughs> <laughs> You're ridiculous. Well, I was very comfortable with all my gear and I slept when I was supposed to. I had two different naps and I feel awesome. Customs was a breeze. We just cruised through. We did our declarations. Uh, there was no line to actually go through customs. And then our bags were already out waiting for us when we came through. So no problem. I think we made it through in about 10 minutes after we got off the plane. Now get that cab. Getting the taxi is easy. We just walked right out across the street and one's rolling up for us right now, but it's $215. That's pretty steep. Now, if we wanted to take the train, that would be about $15 per person, plus maybe walking or taking another cab to your hotel from wherever that station lands you. Oh, my bags? Yes. 
Well, it was an expensive ride, but it got us here faster and tip is included. And now we're at the robot hotel. Colt's so excited he ran ahead. He wants to see what kind of robots they are. It's scary. It's scary. It's scary. Why? Let me chew up. Oh my gosh, that's awesome. We're staying at Henna Ginza, and it is one of the robot hotels in Tokyo. The original one opened in 2015, and since then it was so popular because it's in the Guinness Book of World Records for being the first robot hotel. But now there's a bunch. So we have to check it through the kiosk. Let's see if it does English. I want to show you a couple of things in the lobby here. First of all, we have the little cafe area. This is open for breakfast, it's open for tea time, and right now it's open for cocktail hour. So you just go in, it's self-service. I'm gonna make a little cocktail. Cup and dice. And then you pick one of these syrups. Pink grapefruit, green apple. Yeah, let's go with green apple. So a little green apple liqueur, and then if you want, which I do, soda. It's like an apple teeny. Now right over here, because it's a robot hotel, you have all of your amenities right down here, any kind of toiletries that you forgot to bring with you, toothbrushes and toothpaste, pajamas, razors, hairbrushes, and then a vending machine that has a few extra things that you actually have to pay for. We got the key, let's get our bags and go see the room. Yes, seeing we're 10. Yeah. You can rent a VR, or what are they called, the? Oculus? You can rent a, a VR Oculus. Can I rent it? Uh, we'll see. We're kind of, this is kind of a tight turnaround. We're here late. We gotta get some dinner, go to bed, and then we're out of here first thing in the morning. By the way, we reserved the family life expectancy room. Life expectancy? <laughs> Healthy life. Healthy life. Something about life expectancy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I thought I. Two toy beds. I don't know where the switches are. <laughs> this is tiny. Tiny, 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 oh my gosh. Phil and I are gonna have to share a twin bed. Colt, look at your little sofa. No, it extends out. Really that cold, yeah. Except for he said you can only sit on it, and we thought it's a couch, so it'd be fine. <laughs> um, what's this? Oh wait, no, here, then you put the, this is doubled up. So here, Oh, okay, 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 okay. Okay. Here we go. Okay. That part first. Oh, and no, that's cold bed. Is it steaming your feet? No, it's massaging them. It's not even warm, it's just moving the sides in. Oh, that's really vibrating. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it feels so good. Oh, it's like cracking my knuckles. What? I feel like that, like, if it's a robot, it'll just be like, <laughs> oh, bye bye, Joe. <laughs> What do you mean it's cracking your knuckles though? This place certainly is living up to its name as Robot Hotel. There are robots galore in here. We have a heater robot over here for space heating. There are two robots for feet. One is the massager that Brooklyn's using, and the other one is just a foot heater steamer that Colt's using back there. But the piece de la resistance is over here. This is the LG Styler. And what you do is take one of these hangers out, you hang your shirt up on here, you place it inside. If you have pants that you want to get a crease on, those would go over here in the door. You push, pops open. You hang your slacks from right here. They go right down here. You put them under these little slats on the side to keep them nice and flat. You shut it. And then when you close the door, it goes through this steaming, refreshing, freshening cycle that gets all of the wrinkles out, gets the crease in your pants and gets all of the smells or anything else that you have in your clothes from the trip out of there so that it feels fresh when you put it on. And this isn't robotic, but the pillows they have here are especially made for hotels. It's a five chamber pillow called the Lofty Sleepy Pillow. Really good, no matter which direction you turn it, you can get a different level of thickness. So however you sleep, you find, oh boy, oh boy. What do you think, bud? One other computer driven device is the toilet. It has a nice bidet here. Oh, the seats are heated and it's the best. But here are the controls for the bidet and I cannot read Japanese. Shower, bidet. What's the difference between a shower and a bidet? <gasps> it's a little flush button. It is time for our very first meal in Tokyo. Thank you, bud. You're welcome. There's so much great food all over Japan, but in Ginza, 
they have some great ramen. So we have to have ramen tonight. We're gonna get back on chat GPT and ask it where we should get ramen. So I'm going to put in here best ramen close to the Henna Hotel in Ginza. And it is telling us to go to Ginza Genraku, Genraku. Ginza Genraku, okay. It's one of the best hidden gems in Ginza, offers rich tasted ramen with well stewed back fat, which covers the surface of the bowl. Sounds awesome. So now we have to figure out which direction to go. It's just a 10 minute walk. Well now we can't read the signs and there's a few restaurants to choose from, but we Googled and we looked at the images. I think we're onto something. This must be it. I don't know how to do this. So this is our first ramen spot and I don't know what to do, but I think we pick the ramen and then we order it from the machine and then we take it up there and they make it. Okay. Figured out how it works. So you pick out what you want and you don't need to know the language because there are pictures and then there's a number associated with it. So you come over here and you press something. I don't know what to do. <laughs> Let's try money first. A thousand yen is about $7.50 USD. There we go. And then, oop, we got our tickets, we go and hand it to them. And we wait. I'm blown away by our room and I think some of it comes down to the fact that when Erin made the reservation, she somehow inadvertently put in one person. But still, I don't understand why that would be called a family room in any part of the planet. But to Erin's credit, like web forms here are very tricky. There are a lot of fields that are sometimes hard to fill out, hard to figure out what you're supposed to put in there. So things can be pretty confusing. Even though about half the stuff we've run into so far does have an English variation, the other half does not. So it's really confusing. Yeah, it's true. We've even come across a few websites that didn't have any English translation and a few forms that we really could not submit because we couldn't fill out the characters it needed. Otherwise, we're managing pretty well and we've been able to make most of our reservations ahead of time. Uh, just little surprises like this. Our room is tiny. It's gonna be a very interesting night. I might sleep on the floor. Phil is not sleeping on the floor. Brooklyn and I are gonna share a bed. We're gonna cuddle, cuddle bug. I'm so excited. I'm so excited for our first meal in Tokyo. And we got this soy sauce one. It's their classic ramen dish. And I wanna try the broth first. Oh, it's so good. So what they do is they cook the pork back fat so much that it melts into the soup. Oh my gosh, and you can really, really taste it. I haven't even had a noodle yet. Now I wanna dress it. We're gonna make it a bit spicy. This is a little sesame oil, and this is soy sauce. And these are peanut shell flakes. Oh my gosh, this pork here. This is like a little slice of pork, and it kinda just fell apart. And the noodles are unmatched. They are just like, they're just so good. They're like silky and silk, like silk noodles. Mmm, noodles are on point. They are on fire. It was so, so good. It was insane. It was so good. Now, if you see Phil's, you can tell like the back fat is kind of sitting on top. Mine, I've mixed it up so it separates a little bit if you let it sit. Holt and I are having a discussion. He was thinking that it's disrespectful to slurp your noodles, but I'm pretty sure I've heard the opposite, that it's a sign of respect to slurp your soup and your noodles and get every last morsel of it. Plus, when you slurp, it kind of aerates the food and can make the flavors more powerful. I feel like I'm so tired, my tongue's not working right. Phenomenal. And I've been reading that some ramens, when they put the noodles in there, it's important that you eat it right away. It's kind of like al dente with Italian pastas, how you want it to just have the right amount of bite. Same thing here, you let it sit too long, it's not gonna be good. So you gotta dig in right away. Pork, killer. The pork is what makes this so, so, so delicious. Oh my God, that is the best first meal in Tokyo that I've ever had. Doesn't make any sense. It makes perfect sense. You said that is the best first meal in the Exactly. 
<laughs> Let's hit it. So first impressions of Tokyo, just getting here. Uh, yeah, the hotels are as small as people had been saying they are. Uh, they're very compact, so I can tell even the restaurants are pretty compact here, so it's a thing. And the ramen noodles are as good as people say they are. They are just like silk that just your teeth go mmm. I'm not trying to single out this hotel or anything. I get that things are smaller here. There's nothing wrong with that. Uh, I think it is interesting that it's just twin beds and they call it a family place though. Like maybe a divorced family, uh, something, I don't know. It doesn't really make any sense to me, but it's only one night that we're here and then we're gonna experience quite a bit of luxury, so I think we can all deal with it. Full honesty, I am a little disappointed that we saw two human employees at the robot hotel so far. I was kind of expecting an all robot experience, but I'm sure that's not realistic. Uh, the first one that they opened had over 200 robots working there and only seven human employees. So if the numbers are the same here, we've seen two out of seven. It has been a really long travel day, but we're really, really happy to be here in Japan. But it is lights out because we're getting up so early tomorrow. It's almost 5.30 in the morning and we are up and around and honestly, I feel refreshed. And I am super, super grateful for our Manta sleep masks because they are like pillows on your face. They are awesome and they truly, truly helped me sleep on the plane and last night. And I'm gonna put this LG Styler to use officially because I've got one of my t-shirts that I wanna to wear today and it's pretty wrinkled from being in my suitcase. So I'm just gonna throw it on here and see how well this does. Okay, we'll just hit power. I'm gonna push the first cycle and start. Not bad. Not bad for a couple of minutes. Thanks, bud. We are up and running really quickly. We're in a bit of a rush. We have a train to catch today, but we need to ask Chat GP, Chat GPT where the nearest 7-Eleven is because kids need some food, I need some coffee. Do they drink coffee in Japan? I don't know yet. They gotta have coffee. There's gotta be a coffee told culture. So many vending machines just on the street. Oh, and look, there's coffee. There's coffee right there. Any Red Bull? Yeah, Monster. They have fruit sandos here. Do you want a fruit sando? Can I get a strawberry? It's just not enough food for me. They just had those in Oahu. We did a little food tour, and sandos are a, a Japanese sandwich, but those are fruit filled and whipped cream filled and so delicious. For the coffee, I had to pay for the cup first. Now I'm coming over this machine. I love lattes. Put that there and the sugar is in liquid form already, which is brilliant because it's probably gonna blend and mix up a lot easier. Did you put a coffee pot in? Uh, I didn't know that's how it works. I have to put a coffee pot in. God, I'm a newbie. Oh, no, there's coffee. Woo! All right, let's hit it. We're gonna have to take a taxi to the train station because Tokyo is huge. It's pretty much several different cities all in one and Tokyo is a prefecture, which is kind of like a county, I would say, in the United States. Not quite a state, but more like a county. And we're going to a new prefecture in Kyoto. The true breakfast of champions. We have to check out now. Processing, please wait. Please insert your room key. Yay. It's in the room. We need a human. <laughs> it needs our room keys, and I just gave him one of them. The other one's in the room. So now we have no room key, and it needs the second room key. Can I speak to a human? She's not listening. What if you replied with Expectations versus reality. You can do so much research and prepare yourself as much as you can before going to a new country. It is still going to feel so different. I feel like I knew what to expect when we bought the ramen, but it was still very foreign and I still felt like I didn't know what I was doing. Also the coffee, didn't know what I was doing. But we're getting our feet under us and we are ready for an awesome trip throughout Japan. But now we're headed off on the next leg of our journey. It's gonna be a two hour trip where speeds are going to approach 200 miles an hour without ever leaving the ground. Subscribe and follow us along. We are the Lockwoods, Aaron, Phil, Reagan, Brooklyn, and Cole. 
we're traveling the world to experience, up close and in person, all the natural wonders and distinct cultures that our kids would otherwise be consuming only through textbooks and TV. We think it's a better way to learn, and we're working hard to fund this little experiment in the hope that our kids will grow up wiser, kinder, and more grateful for the beauty of our diverse planet and its people.